Welcome to another video by Psychology for Life. Today, I will be discussing differences between psychological testing and assessment, assumptions of psychological assessment, and evaluating a psychological test. The words assessment and testing are often used interchangeably, but there are important distinctions between the two. Psychological assessment is defined as the gathering and integration of psychology-related data for the purpose of making a psychological evaluation that is accomplished through the use of tools such as tests, interviews, case studies, behavioral observation, and specially designed apparatuses and measurement procedures. On the other hand, psychological testing is the process of measuring psychology-related variables by means of devices or procedures designed to obtain a sample of behavior. Based on the definition, you can see that assessment is broader than testing. In fact, testing can be considered as one of the procedures used in assessment. The first important distinction between testing and assessment is in their objective. Testing is usually carried out to obtain a gauge, usually numerical in nature, with regard to an ability or attribute of a person. On the other hand, assessment is done to answer a referral question, solve a problem, or arrive at a decision through the use of tools of evaluation. The second major distinction between testing and assessment is in the process of carrying them out. Testing can be done individually or in groups, but the process usually involves administering a test and generating a score. In assessment, the process involves carefully observing the individual to determine not just his or her scores, but his or her psychological functioning. A third major distinction between testing and assessment is in the skill of the evaluator. Testing usually requires technician-like skills in terms of administering and scoring a test as well as in interpreting a test results. On the other hand, assessment usually requires an educated selection of tools of evaluation, skill in evaluation, and thoughtful organization and integration of data. Let us now turn to the assumptions of psychological assessment. The field of testing and assessment has a lot of disagreement and debate. However, the assumptions that will be discussed are the general agreements that are held by those engaged in this field. Without them, the field cannot move forward and carry out its work. The first major assumption is that psychological traits and states exist. A trait has been defined as any distinguishable, relatively enduring way in which one individual varies from another. States also distinguish one person from another but are relatively less enduring. The second major assumption is that psychological states and traits can be quantified and measured. Once it is acknowledged that psychological traits and states do exist, then it can also be assumed that they can be quantified and measured. Of course, there are so many debates as to the best way to measure these traits and states. The challenge is to find the best way to measure these traits and states in a way that reflects their existence in real life. The third major assumption is that test-related behavior predicts non-test-related behavior. In other words, we expect that a person's scores on different psychological states and traits will predict whether a person will manifest these states or traits in his or her life. The fourth major assumption is that psychological tests and other measurement techniques have strengths and weaknesses. They are fallible instruments, so it is crucial to know their limitations and to know when to use them. The fifth assumption is that various sources of error are always present in the measurement process. The key here is to learn the techniques to minimize these sources of error or to mitigate their effects so that the results of assessment can be useful and not invalid. The sixth assumption is that testing and assessment can be conducted in a fair and unbiased manner. It is important to keep in mind that tests are tools, and just like any other tools such as hammers, ice picks, or wrenches, they can be used properly or improperly. We need to know the possible sources of bias or unfairness in assessment so that we can find ways to overcome them. 
finally, the last assumption is that testing and assessment can benefit society. A world without tests might seem appealing, but a world without tests will probably lead to more chaos and disorder. Many critical decisions are based on assessment and testing, and the key is not to remove them, but to improve them. The last part of this overview is about evaluating a psychological test. What are the characteristics of a good psychological test? The first thing to consider in evaluating a test is its theoretical orientation. Before we can evaluate whether a test is appropriate, we must first understand its theoretical orientation. We must research the construct that the test is supposed to be measuring, and then examine the process that the test uses to measure this construct. The second thing to consider in evaluating a test is its usefulness. If a test is too long, the test takers may become so frustrated that the way they answer may invalidate the results. Other factors such as the reading level of the test and culturally biased items may also make it less useful. Another important consideration in evaluating a test is the process carried out in order to standardize it. Crucial here is to check the norms to which the test taker's scores will be compared. The norms are usually generated from a sample of people called the standardization sample. We need to ask three questions regarding the standardization sample. 1. Does it represent the population of intended test takers? 2. Is the standardization sample large enough? And 3. Are there subgroup norms? These points will be explained in more detail in another video on test standardization. Another important thing to consider in evaluating a psychological test is its reliability. The reliability of a test refers to its degree of stability, consistency, and predictability. It addresses the extent to which scores obtained by a person are or would be the same if the person is re-examined by the same test on different occasions. Reliability will be discussed in more detail in another video. Perhaps the most important consideration of all in evaluating a psychological test is its validity. Whereas reliability addresses issues of consistency, validity assesses whether a test truly measures the trait it is supposed to measure. Validity is so important that another video is dedicated to it. Thank you very much for watching this overview of psychological testing and assessment. The following are the references for this video. Credits to Pixabay for the pictures used in this video and Ben Sound for the music. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.